Hello. We will be using Noon Setting Daily Prayer, page 296 in the Lutheran Service Book. Oh, I see that we have some late joiners. <laughs> so I'll just uh, wait a moment for them to to get a, get a hymnal and. Uh, And find a passage for them. Uh, page 296. Gives me enough time to select a hymn beforehand, a psalm beforehand. I think I got a good one there. All right. I invite you to rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in his distress and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. For our song, let's have Psalm 142. 142 in the beginning of the service book. Uh, we'll be speaking this in unison. With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Please be seated. A text for meditation is Revelation chapter 16. Uh, this is, well, it'll actually take me far too long to explain the context, so I'll just start reading. Uh, chapter 16 in uh, Revelation. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels with the plagues, Go your ways, pour out your vials of wrath upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a foul and grievous sore upon all who had the mark of the beast, and upon those who worshipped his image. And the second angel shed out his vial upon the sea, and it turned, as it were, into the blood of a dead man, and every living thing died in the sea. And the third angel shed out his vial upon the rivers and springs of waters, and they turned to blood. And I heard an angel say, Lord, who is and who was? You are righteous and holy, because you have given such judgments. For they shed the blood of saints and prophets, and therefore you have given them blood to drink, for they have deserved it. And I heard another out of the altar say, It is so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial on the sun, and power was given to him to afflict people with the heat of fire. 
And the people raged in their great heat and spoke evil of the name of God, who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was made dark. And people gnawed their tongues for suffering, and blasphemed the God of heaven for the anguish and pain of their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water dried up, to prepare the ways of the kings of the east. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles to go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Happy is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he be found naked, and men see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured his vial out into the, into the air, and there came a voice out of heaven from the seat, saying, It is done. And there followed voices, thunderings, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since man has been upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of all the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give to her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Every isle fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell out of heaven a great hail, as, uh, as if of talents, upon people, and the people blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for it was great, and the plague of it sore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Lord, have mercy. Now, let me try to establish some of the context that I couldn't really write before reading this. So this is the third group of seven in the book of Revelation. Uh, the first group of seven were the uh, seven seals on the scroll from the throne of God that Jesus Christ, the Lamb, was opening, and these brought uh, many, not plagues, but many afflictions upon the earth. In fact, you'll see a connection between those scrolls opening and this and this uh, group of seven here. For when the uh, third angel uh, basically enacts his judgment, out from the altar in heaven comes the cry, It is so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. We find in the sixth scroll, opened by the Lamb, sorry, no, the fifth scroll opened by the Lamb, Fifth seal of the scroll opened by the Lamb. <laughs> uh, the saints in heaven under the altar crying out for uh, vengeance upon those who have spilled their blood. Basically, that God's righteous action would be brought upon the people of this world for afflicting the church and killing the proper servants of God. So we see that coming up in, the, in this chapter here. Now, the second group of seven, uh, the second uh, group of seven is, are the trumpets. Uh, the angels with the trumpets, and a lot of what they're doing are basically throwbacks to the plagues, which is what you find here in this group of seven, the angels with the, with the vials of wrath, or cups of wrath, depending on your translation. Uh, you'll see here uh, grievous sores upon the bodies, so people were afflicted with sores as one of the, uh, one of the plagues of Egypt. The uh, waters basically turned into blood. That was the first plague in Egypt. And we find a few other things here, like uh, the frogs. Not quite like what happened in Egypt, because what happened in, in Egypt was God caused a whole bunch of frogs to go up from the Nile, and basically consume crops and uh, afflict daily life. Here the frogs are more demons than anything else. Uh, Incidentally, this is also why you, why you will find on some medieval Christian artwork frogs, because in the medieval Christian mindset, they were representatives of, representatives of evil. So, if you see somebody in medieval artwork with a frog on them, that, that means they're, they were sinful. Yeah. But 
All of this is being brought upon in the world basically to end it. And we find that in uh, right after the seventh angel pours out his vial, and following that are voices, thunderings, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since man has been upon the earth. Again, this connects back to the other two groups of three, because this happened at the end of the both groups of three. Yeah, so at the end of the seven seals, there was thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake, and after uh, the second group of three with trumpets, lightnings and thunders and earthquakes. The idea is that this is the end of the world. Again, because Revelation gives multiple accounts for how the world's ending. Uh, this account is specifically in relation to Satan, the beast from the sea, and the beast from the earth, or as he calls him here, the false prophet. So that's the unholy trinity that is being uh, attacked and destroyed along with all their followers. And in past devotionals, I've been talking about, well, how horrible it is that, yes, there's so many people who are being consumed in all of this and will fall under God's wrath. Uh, we find at the end of chapter 14, being put in the wine, wine press of God's wrath, that there is uh, 320 kilometers of blood up to about your chest, just height. Not a pleasant image. And we don't wish this to befall upon anyone. But as it uh, comes up here in this specific reading, the people gnawed on their tongues for suffering and blasphemed the God of heaven for the anguish and pain of their source and did not repent of their deeds. You'll find this a lot with, well, people, animals, anything you're trying to teach a moral to, uh, where they've done something wrong, you try to punish them for doing something wrong, basically to correct their judgment and to try and teach them what's right, and then they just keep hating you for it. They don't want to admit their guilt or they don't want to turn back on what they've done. They are quite content to live in their wickedness. Um, I actually had a cat who would do this quite a, quite a bit. He would do something mean, like he would uh, bite me or hiss at me, and then I'd tell him no. Nope. And then he took great offense to me telling him no, and then he, well, then he would bite and scratch it and hiss at me even more, because he did not want to repent of his actions. The idea with uh, the people who are following the beast is that they are unrepentant. They are quite content to ignore all warnings to stop what they're doing. They are quite content to stop all warnings that such and such is evil and that you will face punishment for your actions. Even at these end times, God is sending these plagues upon the earth to say, this is wrong and and sin must be destroyed upon the earth. And still, they do not repent. They do not say that such and such is wrong. They want to be, remain within the wickedness of the world. And that is why God continues. And why it is so horrific that there's blood going out for 320 kilometers. Because people remained in their, will, will remain in their sins. It's not something we're happy about, but it's something that it will come about. And as I've said many times in past devotions, we are horrified by something like that happening. We're horrified that, uh, well, even Satan himself, he, he took a third of the angels with him to be condemned to hell. And we don't want something like that happening to anyone here on earth. What we'd rather have is that we'd rather have them turn to God and live, repenting of their sin and, re and basically allowing, him, allowing God to forgive that sin rather than holding on to that sin with all that you've got. Jesus Christ has come into our midst to save us from our sins, to rip the sin away from our flesh and to vanquish it so that it will never again touch us. 
in the new heavens and the new earth, there will be no place for sin, for Jesus Christ is cleansing the entire earth of it. He's removing the sinfulness of the world and making sure that never again will any of us suffer the ill effects of sin and death. This is the great hope we have. And if people remain in their sins, if they remain linked to this thing that brings them death, they will suffer it. They will suffer all the effects of sin, including God's judgment. So we as Christians want to go out and profess the good news that Jesus Christ has come so that you don't need to die in your sins. You don't need to be left in your sins and left to God's judgment. You can be found innocent and pure in Christ for our Lord offered himself for you, offering his blood in, in place of your own so that you do not have to go to judgment but can have peace in him. It is this message of hope which we bring to all peoples everywhere and which we continue to proclaim in the hopes that those who are in the world who are left in their wickedness, left in their sinfulness, and repent of their sins and turn to God our Father and embrace our Lord Jesus Christ for their forgiveness. Amen. We continue on page 296 with the Kyrie. I invite you to rise. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the grace that we live in day to day. Please, Lord, help us share the good news of your grace with all people everywhere, that they may come to know of your love for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that they need not die in their sins, but live eternally with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord God, in this world we face many hardships. Uh, we even see in the book of Revelation all the wrath that is being brought out into, brought, uh, that is being brought forth into the world. Please, Lord, we pray that you stay with us within our own, uh, within our own hardships, our own afflictions, and we pray that you be with us at this time of the pandemic. That that uh, we be protected from illness and that you heal all those who may be infected and that uh, that a vaccine will be made so that all of us can be uh, protected from this illness lord be with us we pray amen blessed lord jesus christ at this hour you run upon the cross stretching out your loving arms to embrace the world in your death. Grant that all people of the earth may look to you and see their salvation. For your mercy's sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.